coming Doors all fastened and the windows pinned Keep your hand on that plow Hold on No one said you done lost your track Can't plow straight and keep a looking back Keep your hand on that plow and hold on
So, we're going to continue today in the book of Ecclesiastes, and we have moved out of chapter 10, and we are moving into chapter 11. So, we're coming to the end of the book. We only got chapter 11, and then chapter 12, and then we'll actually be through with uh, Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to be sad. I'm going to let you right know right now. I, I feel like I have come to know Kohelev. I appreciate him, his way of viewing life, and obviously, his way of viewing life must be important because God allows allowed it to be here in scripture. So we're going to pick it up where we left off last time. If you remember, we have finished chapter chapter 10 and in chapter 10 it talked about being up under an immature boss or immature leader. Woe, remember he used the word woe. Woe is the land that has a lad or somebody who's immature, a youth who is over, somebody who has not experienced life. So the woe is the land, woe is the country, woe is the county, woe is the state, woe is the city who has that type of individual. And even if that individual is over you, you need to be quiet about what you say because there will be a bird that will come and even when you are speaking in silence and in secret uh, that bird will come and they will expose you and we know in the world we live in right now boy social media will definitely expose you if you say something uh, the wrong way matter of fact there's so many cameras going with these smartphones you think you saying something to somebody you think that nobody's listening and here it is they got the microphone on so anyway that's what he's saying when when you're up under one of these bosses. But he continues on in chapter 11, and he is speaking, I believe that he's speaking to individuals that he really cares about, and he wants to make sure that they do well in this life. They do well in this life. Now, it's not about trying to necessarily get rich, but he just wants to make sure that the individuals who are listening to him or reading him do well in this life. And so we're going to look at the first six verses. I'm going to start here in verse 1. Chapter 11 of Ecclesiastes, verse 1. He says, cast your bread on the surface of the waters, for you will find it after many days. Verse 2, divide your portion to seven or even eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. Now, what in the world is he talking about? Talking about, talking about bread and throwing it on the water. You know, I think about throwing bread on the water. All it does is get soggy. I mean, I don't even get, get the point of what he, uh, what he was talking about the first time that I saw this, trying to figure out what he means. But, but, but now having, of course, looked at it and studied it, what he's talking about here, he is talking about business ventures, or he's talking about uh, selling and doing merchandise, that type of thing. He's saying that individuals need to diversify. That is, that you need to throw your bread, and we can even think about it with regard to money. You know, you need to invest your money in a myriad of things because you don't know which ones are going to come back to you. You don't know which ones are going to sink, and you don't know which ones are going to do, do well. It's actually a picture of somebody who is uh, selling merchandise and they are selling the merchandise on different ships. They are selling on this ship and that ship and this ship and hoping that individuals as they go out to these different places that they will sell their goods and when they return they will bring back the money from the sale of those goods. And you don't know based upon where the ship is going. One ship may be going east, one may be going west, one may be going north, one may be going south. You don't know in what ports they're going to land in and so you don't know where your merchandise is going to sell big time and you don't know where the, si the, the ship might actually sink and you will lose all of your merchandise. He says you need to make sure that you do that. In other words, do not put all of your eggs into one basket. You need to diversify. Now, I want to say here, I want to go back to chapter 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 19. I want to go back there because last week, when we look at chapter 10, verse, uh, verse 19, I said this for, based on this verse. It says, men prepare a meal for enjoyment, and wine makes life merry, and money is the answer to everything. You remember me saying that, right? And I gave an illustration of the casino. So somebody could say, well, Pastor, it sounds like to me in chapter 11, what Kohelev is saying is that you need to go to the casino, and you need to play all the different games that are in the casino, because 
because you might win one of them. That is not what he's saying. I just, I just want to clear that up right, right now. He is not talking about, he's not talking about gambling. He is talking about investing. He is talking about business. That he is saying that you as an individual, if you're going to sell your wares, you need to make sure that you sell them in a number of different places, in a number of different ways. That's what he's saying. Now let me try to explain to you the difference between uh, service or a product investing and gambling in case you, you didn't understand, right? So when you, when you are investing or you're providing a service, you are, you are investing in someone else else for the benefit of others. You are selling sweaters and so that sweater is going to help keep somebody warm. You are selling cars and that is going to help somebody get from point A to point B. Yes, you are going to get the profits of selling those things or investing in those things, but you are providing a good or a service. Gambling, on the other hand, is you are risking money for the purpose of just trying to get more money right you you you, know, you you are you aren't providing a good or service to anybody except maybe the casinos that's about it but you are risking money for the purpose of trying to win money god does not sanction that anywhere now if you do it i mean it's kind of a gray area if you do it that's that's between you and the lord but what koheleth is saying and that's all the point i want to make what koheleth is saying he is not talking about gambling he is not trying to say diversify your gambling what he's saying is that you need to diversify your investments or how you sell you ever think about uh, those individuals who, who own a number of restaurants right they may uh, own a, about five or six mcdonald's what the purpose is they, 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 they make sure that they uh, have, a, have a store here on this corner. They make sure they have a store in this area. They have another store in another area. They know that the, some areas will get more traffic than others. Matter of fact, let me, let, let me explain this. Let me try and, and break this down. For us as individuals, I want to say this. You don't have to be rich to have a portfolio. All of us, all of us need to have some type of portfolio, investment portfolio, especially as we think about retirement. And in that portfolio, there needs to be a number of things. I would say right now, I'm, I'm not trying to give you financial advice, but I would say, number one, you need to have real estate. Number two, you need to have cash. Number three, you need to invest in precious metals. Number, number four, you need to invest in bonds. You need to, number, number five, you need to invest in, in stocks. And most of all, you need to invest in eternity. The, the best ROI or return on investment is investing in God's kingdom. And I'm going to come back to that, that later. But you need to invest in those things. Now, I'm going to tell you, you know, the, the, the way that it was explained to me is that we, we have, you know, if somebody gives us a pie, right? Let's just say it's an apple pie. And then that apple pie is six different slices. And each slice needs to be one thing or the other, real estate, cash, precious metals, stocks, bonds, and to the Lord, right? You got six of these, these categories. I want to put it this way. I want to put it this way, right? I, I, I don't think it's a pie with six different slices. I think it's six different pies. You need to have six different pies. I'm just, I'm just speaking from, 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 uh, from experience, right? Because, because I just know, you know, I, I, you know, I got three kids, and one time I had all three of them at home at the same time. And I, I know that sometimes I have some food. I, I don't know what it is, and sometimes, you know, we don't eat all the bacon. Now, y'all know I like some bacon. I, sometimes, you know, I, so, so we will have two slices of bacon left over, and I'm planning, I'm planning on eating that tomorrow. And so I put it in the refrigerator, in a baggie, and then tomorrow when I come, guess what? Ain't no bacon. Somebody done stole my bacon, right? So, 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 so I don't need to have everything in one bag. I need to have multiple bags. And so the thing here of having six different pies is that maybe I take my six most delicious 
pies, one blueberry, one, one, one peach cobbler type of pie, one is apple pie, one is apple blueberry and, and a whole mixture, but I got six of them. So if somebody comes and takes one, I still got five of my best. That is what Kohelet is saying. He's saying that we need to invest in multiple things because we do not know which one is going to be successful. Now, I spent a lot of time on that point, but it sets, sets up the rest of the verses. So in verse 3, he says, if clouds are full, they pour out like rain upon the earth. And whether a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, wherever the tree falls, there it is. Lies. Now, isn't that, isn't that good? Isn't that good? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, a, that's as obvious as it comes. The clouds are full. When the clouds are full, they will pour out rain. He deals with two different things here. He deals with the inevitability of some things, and he talks about the randomness of others. The inevitability is that if you see a dark cloud in the sky and you see lightning and you hear thunder and you see the sky darkening and it's coming your way, guess what? You can be pretty assured that it is going to rain. You can bet money on it. I shouldn't say that because I just said gam gambling's not good, right? But you can count on that. But on the other hand, let's just say it's a nice sunny day and you're in the morning and you think you're going to go and just sit under the tree, tree. But all of a sudden, the tree falls, the wind blows, the tree falls, and man, there it is. And you know, it, it is what it is. It's not moving. You can't move it. It's large. And where it fell, there is going to lie. You didn't know what direction the wind was going to come from. You didn't even know that the wind was coming. And what he's saying is that there are random events in life that we don't expect. There are some things that we know to be sure, but we need to be prepared for both of those type of events. And that's one of the reasons why we, you know, we as a church, believe it or not, we support church plants, right? And, and I can tell you right now, I'm not going to say the name of any churches, but in the last two or three years, we've supported at least two church plants that we thought were going to be successful. Guess what? One is very successful and the other had to close. I you know, there's no way I was, going, I was about to say it again. I was about to say, I bet money, but I don't bet. But I, I'm just using that phrase. But I would have guessed that both of those churches would have done extremely well. Matter of fact, that's why we supported them. But one is taking off and the other has closed. That's what Kohelev is saying. He said, look, don't put all your eggs in one basket because there is no guarantee there may be some signs that this one thing will succeed, but there is a randomness to life that only God knows, and the wind may pick up and it may blow down the tree, and guess what? Now you got to deal with what you got. Well, he continues on in this same vein. I just want to make sure we understand that. Verse 4, he says, He who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Let me repeat that. He who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. And so let's go back to, to verse 3. What is he talking about? He's saying, well, you know, if we see the, if we see the clouds coming, but, you know, and, and we see it's full of rain, but, but, but if we don't plant the seed, if we don't sow, nothing is going to grow. He says, stop watching the clouds. Stop watching. At some point, you got to decide that you need to do something if you want to see something happen. He says, it's not going to do any good. And he says, as far as, as, far as uh, uh, reaping things, he says, who he who looks at the, at, the, at the clouds will not reap at all. Right? If you just continue to, to look at the clouds and, and to put your finger up for the wind and trying to figure out what's going on, guess what? You will never do anything. It will never amount to anything. You know, that's why, that's why I just, 
I'm always amazed when I'm watching sports and, and the commentator, of course, they usually have what they call an analyst, a sports analyst. And a sports analyst is somebody who has played the game before, but they're usually up there with the broadcaster. And oftentimes, the broadcaster has never played that sport a day in their life. But they can sit around and they can they can tell you everything about it, but they've never played it before. They've never had the experience and the, and the joy of, of, of knowing what it means to actually play that game competitively. What he is saying is that we need to get in the game. That, that we as individuals, that we need to invest, we need to serve, we need to get involved, we need to do multiple things because we have no idea what is going to succeed. If we're always just bench watchers, nothing is going to happen in our life. Now you can, you can, you, you can say, well, you know what, it just seems like up to this point, pastor has done nothing but given us some financial <laughs> advice. Well, we're going to turn this thing because I think the best way that we can begin to invest is to invest in God's kingdom by different and multiple means. Now, somebody's going to say, well, you know what? I, I, I don't know. You know, Kohelev seemed like he kind of out there to, uh, uh, giving the, 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 this philosophy and stuff. Is this really what Jesus would have us to do? I'm glad you asked that question. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We was there a couple weeks ago and we were looking at the, the 10 virgins who uh, the ten bridesmaids, who, 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 who five, five were wise and five were, were foolish. We looked at that. Now, we're going to look at right below that. And it's, it's, it's a lot to read, so stay with me. But I, I, I want to I get here. I want to show that Jesus understands investment and he expects us to invest in his kingdom. Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 14, he gives a parable about the kingdom. He said, for it's just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. You get that? The one who was given five talents went and traded, in other words, did business and was able to earn five more talents. That is 10. He invested five and he ended up with 10. Okay. Now we're going to keep on going. Verse 17. In the same manner, the one who had received two talents gained two more. So he also traded in the same thing. Now verse 18. But the one who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. He didn't do nothing. He was just like the guy, you know, well, you know, I, I don't know which way the wind's going to blow. So I don't know if I'm going to sow anything because I don't know you know, if I sow it this way and the wind blows that way, man, I'm going to have wasted seed. In other words, well, I don't know if I'm going to pull up anything because it looks like, man, the clouds are coming. I don't really know. In other words, this individual says, no, I'm not getting in the game. I'm just going to put it in a hole <laughs> and see if it grows somehow. All right, we'll keep on going. Verse 19. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Verse 20. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought the five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, well done good and faithful servant for you are faithful in a few things I will put you in charge of many enter into the joy of your master you get that you get that Jesus is saying well done you have invested in my kingdom. You've taken the five and you've made it into ten. Bless your heart. Come on in here into my kingdom. Now he, 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 he goes on in verse 22. And it says, also the one who had received two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Enter into the joy of your master. And once again, commendation, man. You only had two. You didn't have as many as the, the guy who had five. But man, you doubled that thing. Hey, come on in to my joys. This is good. So, so, so Jesus is saying, this is good stuff to invest in his kingdom. But then here we go. <laughs> here we go. Verse 24. And the one who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I, I knew you to be a hard man. 
reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And, and I was afraid and I went away and I hid your talent in the ground. See, you have, have of what is your <laughs> so old boy went, you know, dug up the talent. You know, I had to probably get the mud off of it and everything. And it says, hey, you know what? I, I didn't I didn't get in the game. I just I, you know, but, but I'm going to give back to you what was yours. How do you respond? Verse, uh, verse 26. But his master answered and said to him, you wicked, lazy slave. You knew that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I gather no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank. And on my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. He says, he said, at least you could have put my money in the bank. Which is, once again, we talked about that portfolio there, the cash. At least you could have put my money in the bank where it would have earned some interest. He says, therefore, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. 29, for, the, for, for everyone who has, more shall be given, and he, who, uh, he will have an abundance, but the one who does not have even what he does have shall be taken away. And then he says, throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, why did I read that? I read that because I want you to understand that Jesus understands investment. And he would say amen to what Kohelev says, but he would say it with regard to his kingdom. He's saying that we have talents and we need to use those talents in multiple ways to be able to further God's kingdom. And the more ways that we try to further his kingdom, some will succeed, some will fail, but we need to be about our father's business. Now, here's, here's, here's a mystery about this whole thing, mystery about this. And so we know that Kohila says you can't know the mind of God. And we know that we can't know the mind of God. So we have no idea what is going to succeed and what isn't going to succeed. But I want to pick it back up here in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and look at verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. He says, just as you do not know the path of the wind and how bones are formed in the womb of the pregnant woman, so you do not know the activity of God who makes all things. He's saying, you don't know, <laughs> you don't know the mind of God. You know that when the sperm is the egg, that there's, a, a, there's, there, there's this fetus and it grows or whatever, but you've got no idea how them bones are formed. You know it happens. And you know once the, once the, prog the, 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 uh, the progress starts, it's going to continue. You know that much, but you don't know how this thing works out. He says, you don't even know the path of the wind. Matter of fact, my wife and I, I, I tell you, uh, we know we like to watch these these programs. We just like it, whether it's animals or, or nature or whatever. And we was watching this program. They were talking about storms. They were talking about tornadoes. And, and we were watching and, and, and this tornado hit. I don't know what state it was. It was kind of in the country. But this tornado hit and it came down man, and it wiped out this whole town. It just wiped out everything. It wiped out trees. It just wiped out everything. But it came down to this one house. <laughs> and the family was hiding down in the basement and in the, in, the, in, the, in the tub and all this type of stuff. And they felt the house shake. And when they came out the house, the tornado had actually come down towards their house and made a right turn and went around their house <laughs> and then kept on going. Kept on going. I told my wife, I said, he need to be thanking God. They interviewed the husband, and you know, and he, he upset because all his stuff then got destroyed. I'm like, what a fool. This is a guy a fool. He ought to be praising Jesus. Somebody in that house knows Jesus. I don't know if it's the wife, I don't know if it's the kid, or whatever, but that tornado. And the thing about it is, they could not figure out, the scientists could not figure out, and still can't figure out, why did it do that? That's what Cohen is saying. See, you don't know the wind. The only one that knows the wind is the Lord Almighty. He said, therefore, that is why you need to scatter. You need to use investments here, there, or whatever, because we don't know what God is going to bless and what God is not going to 
bless. Let me tell you something. That's why we pray every Wednesday night. We pray every Wednesday night. We pray for different countries. We pray for mission, we, missionaries. We pray for all these people because we don't know, God. You know, you are doing something great. And we don't know what you're going to do in this country or that country or this village or that village. But we want to be a part of whatever you're doing. That's what he, that's what Goyle is saying, that we need to invest in multiple things. And then bring it to a close here in verse, in verse 6. Yeah, in verse six. I'm, I'm excited about this passage because I just think the applications just apply to us with regard to God's kingdom. He says, verse 6, sow your seed in the morning and do not be idle in the evening, for you do not know whether morning or evening will succeed or whether both of them alike will be good. He says, get busy. You need to be investing in the morning. You need to be sowing in the morning. You need to be sowing at noontime. You need to be sowing in the evening. Isn't that kind of like a song, sowing in the morning? I, I, don't, I don't know. It seems like it's some, some type of song. But we need, to be, we need to be busy about God's business because we don't know what God is going to bless, but we want to be a part of whatever he's blessing. So even though Kohilif used this with regard to doing business and investment, we as believers in Jesus Christ, man, we need to be investing in his kingdom. So I want to make this point right here, okay? I want to make this final point for those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ and really want to serve the Lord. I want to say this. Some of us have been praying for Uncle Jack to come to Jesus for eons. We've been praying for Uncle Jack. We've been praying, 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 Lord, you know, touch Uncle Jack, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And we didn't spend all of our spiritual capital on trying to get Uncle Jack saved. Let me tell you something. Let me say, let me say I, you know, this is what Kohil, I think this is what Jesus would say. Jesus would say, stop putting all your spiritual eggs in one basket. You got a neighbor that needs Jesus. You got a co-worker that needs Jesus. You got a sports friend that needs Jesus. You ought to be spreading the good news of Jesus Christ all over the place because you never know who is ready to come to faith in Christ. Man, it's one of the reasons why we give, we give money to missionaries in, in Africa and in Eurasia and in Asia and in Eastern Europe. And, you know, we give because we don't know what God is going to do, but we want to be a part of what God is doing. If Kohilov was to take this and apply it to the kingdom of God... He would say that those of us who are believers in God, in God need to be rich towards him. And the way we become rich towards him is to invest spiritually in a multitude of different ways and different times and different seasons. For who knows what God might do. You know, there might be somebody that's watching this that does not know the Lord. And somebody told you, you, you have to come to a physical building, walk down the aisle, and talk to the deacon to come into relationship with God. But God uses multiple ways at multiple times. And you might be watching this at 4 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. And God is speaking to you right now. That this is your moment, your opportunity to have a relationship with the God of the universe. And it is so easy to begin that journey. God sent his one and only perfect son, Jesus, to live a perfect life for you and for me. Because he knew we couldn't do it. And he died for all of our wrongdoings, our shame, our sin, and took it all upon himself so that we might take on his goodness 
from God's perspective. And all he asks of us is that we accept this gift that he's given to us. That we trust in him and what he's done for us. That he died for our sin and rose from the grave. You can begin a new walk with him today. You can begin a new life with him today. And if you want to do that, just pray this type of prayer right along with me. You can use, say it in your own words. I'm just going to lead you through it. But you say it the best way that you know how. Let's pray. Father God, I heard the word today. That you want us to serve you in multiple ways, at multiple times, in different seasons. But that also means that you're speaking to us by multiple means, at multiple times, in multiple ways. And I sense that you are speaking to me today. I may not know much about you, but I heard that you sent your son named Jesus to live a perfect life for me who is not perfect so that I might have eternal life with you. I believe that Jesus came, he lived, he died for me, and he rose from the grave so that I might have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I put my trust and my faith in you. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, make sure, I know you know a Christian, I know you know somebody who's a Christian, make sure that you reach out to them and tell them that today you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And for those of us who've been walking with Christ a long time and we've been putting our eggs all in one basket, <laughs> hey look, it's time to diversify. Cast your bread on many waters because you never know what might return back to you. May God bless you and may he keep you and may you have a wonderful week. It's in Christ's name. Amen and God bless. Only come to the chest and Yeah, it's hard to be chosen I done seen my love Yeah, that's why I got hope Trouble don't last always I must get through it okay And then I'm gon' be All I can All I can for you All I can for me I'm just saying I'm gon' be All I can That's what I came to do I'm gon' see those through I can't stop right now Gotta keep on running Ain't no turning back Gotta keep on running Cause I just feel so close I know This ain't for nothing Gotta keep on running I bet I'm going in. Good things come from the S O N. It's definite. No matter what people say, I'ma be something, and I know I can do it right now. No sleep, never take L's. I don't know about defeat, like never know way, and I'll never go away. Yeah, I just wanna say, who said it would ever be easy? But I'll never be broken. Gotta keep on rolling, rolling. Who said? Never be easy, but I'll never be broken. I know I'm going 
this up. I can't oh, shut that down. down. Gotta keep on running. Gotta keep on Ain't running. no turning back. Gotta keep on running. Cause I just feel so low. Stop right now, now. Gotta keep on running. Gotta keep on Ain't running. no turning back. Gotta keep on running. Cause I just feel so low. Great things in my life. In my life. Been through too many fights. I've been holding on tight. Okay. Gotta trust those sight. Cause even when I mess up the problem to lie. When you got a guy like mine, like mine. this thing won't win this time. Hey. On this ride, trying to figure out why. why. But now I know why when I look back over my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And now I think things over. Oh, yeah. Can't truly say, truly say that I Blessed. So I got a swag on the double one time I done made up my mind, God got my mind I can't stop yeah, yeah. right now, I can't stop right now Gotta keep on running, gotta keep on Ain't running Ain't no turning back, ain't no turning back Gotta keep on running, gotta keep on running Cause I just feel so low, so low, so low This ain't for nothing, gotta keep on running Gotta keep on running, I can't stop right now I can't stop right now, I can't stop right now Ain't no turning back Gotta keep on running, gotta keep on running. I just feel so low. No, 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 no,